Well, there certainly is a lot of tax law change all around the world, and in particular, the European Union. So DAX 7, Leaky, what does DAX 7 entail? And why is there this new need for reporting rules? Well, thank you, Rodney. Well, with the increase in digital platforms, we see that large number of private individuals have entered the market and now mm. offering short-term accommodation, transport, or other services through digital platforms. And this development has raised concerns on whether these activities are properly reported. And there are increasing numbers of situations linked to tax evasion, tax avoidance, or even tax fraud. Hmm. To mitigate this, both the OECD and the European Commission introduced specific reporting rules for digital platforms. And within the EU, this is arranged through amending the Directive on Administrative Cooperation in the Field of Taxation, also lovingly known as DAC7. Well, in a nutshell, the rules under DAC7 require a platform operator, as for example an online marketplace, a rideshare platform, or a booking platform for vacation homes, to collect and verify information from sellers pursuant to specific due diligence procedures. And this information must then be shared with the local tax authorities, as well as with the sellers. Not for the purpose of making sure the platform operator meets its tax compliance requirements, but for the purpose of correctly assessing the income earned by sellers through these platforms. Gosh, so this could be a relatively significant uh, undertaking for some platforms. Seen in which which digital platforms will be in scope for DAX seven? Yeah, Rodney, that's indeed a key question, right? Because one of the difficulties that we're going to face here is that the term platform has been defined quite broadly in the directive, mm. and that means that next to the more obvious digital platform, there can also be many less obvious software related activities that could fall in scope of DAX seven. Well, the directive will need to be implemented by the EU member states into their local legislation. And we expect that as part of that implementation process, further guidance will be provided. We understand that the Netherlands is considering public consultation with respect to DAC7, and other EU countries might follow a similar approach. Hmm. And, Sinan, if you had to um, tell us, what impact would these new reporting rules have on platforms that fall within their scope? Yeah, well, as Lika already mentioned, Tax 7 requires platform operators to carry out due diligence procedures for both the collection of the required information and also the validation of that information. And that information that must be maintained by the platform for a number of years so that the authorities can verify whether the platform has uh, has complied with uh, its obligations under the DAC7 directive. Well, penalties and sanctions can be imposed uh, in case of non-compliance, which uh, includes an obligation on the platform operator to close the account of a seller that does not provide the required information in time. Mm -hmm. And the EU member states can also impose penalties on the platform operator itself for not meeting the due diligence and reporting requirements. The DAC7 directive even states that, and I quote, Member states shall also endeavor to coordinate their actions aimed at enforcing compliance, including the prevention of the platform operator from being able to operate within the EU as a last resort. So platform operators need to be mindful that the new rules can have a significant impact on their business and also understand that non-compliance can result in adverse implications, both for the platform operator, but also for the sellers on their platform. Therefore, it's important that the platform operators start with preparing for the new rules in time. Although a platform operator may already have a lot of relevant information in the system, they may need to define or redefine processes and procedures for collecting and validating the required information on the Type 7 in order to comply with the new rules. So, gosh, seen and that, I mean, th those are very significant last resort sanctions effectively curtailing your ability to carry on business. Leaky, this could well be extremely overwhelming for some platform operators. What are we doing to help people in this regard? 
Now, I can fully imagine that this is under uh, is overwhelming what you mentioned, especially when we're looking to the different EU member states mm -hmm. in which we need to implement this legislation and the potential differences between all these member states and how to then apply all these definitions. So if you would like to know more about DAC7 and to what extent you may be covered by DAC7, we would like to invite you then to undertake our impact assessment and readiness mm -hmm. check to show you more on what you could do going forward. Interesting. So that is a some form of tool that people can use to assess their potential obligations or needs under this directive? Yes, it's a questionnaire which guides you through all the relevant definitions under DAC7 and provides you with an, an, a conclusion in that sense. Could you be impacted by these rules? And then as sort of a closing notice, it will also share with you contact details of our DAC7 champions across all our EU member firms. So you could contact locally to see what you can do. Fascinating. So Leke Sinan, this, is, this looks as though it's going to be very impactful to a wide range of folks. So thank you for your time on this very insightful topic. Thank you and have a good day.